Hello everyone, this is Liz here for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Acts chapter 2 verse 11, Romans chapter 5 verse 13, and Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Lord Jesus, bless us as we receive it. Help us to understand what you are trying to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Not what you're trying to say, what you're saying. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, Acts chapter 2, verse 11. Both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. All right, and so these were the Jews who had just received um, the Holy Spirit, right? They had just, um, the Holy Spirit had just descended on Pentecost, and these people who were from all around um, were hearing in their native tongue, right? This was not during a time of Google Translate. This was during a time when people really struggled with language, Right. Even books were hard to come by um, and very expensive. So these people being able to hear um, of God's works in Jerusalem um, during Pentecost, um, during the festivities, hearing in their native tongue, the mighty works of God was also important and very um very miraculous, right? And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Romans chapter 5, verse 13. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. And so um, this is very similar to the last set of scriptures that the Lord gave me but here um this is just in, in the same way this is speaking of the spirit of god which came down in in this miraculous way um but as it came down on the believer it gave us boldness it gave us many of the benefits we can operate in a lot of those benefits that come from the death of Christ which was one of God's mighty works that that um that he has done um and it says we tell, hear them telling uh, in our own tongues the mighty works of God but one of the mighty works of God was sending his son but um as the holy spirit came down the holy spirit came to help us to navigate the law right it helps us to understand the standards of god and to to walk in them now there's a difference between understanding and navigating the law and being count having your sin counted um under the law right because christ died for our sins that means the standard of god did not change right? Sin can occur, but in the same way that um, as before the law came and sin was not counted, in that same way, sin is not counted against those who the price has been paid for, right? Christ died for our sins, past, present, and future sin, right? We still need to repent. We still need to acknowledge the sin, Right. But that does not mean that the sin is counting against us. And so this is a mighty work of God. Right. Because God is a perfect God. You can't just enter into his presence with um sin right that sin needs to be atoned for that sin needs to be covered and and the price has been paid through the mighty work of God in sending his son all right and so the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13 consider the work of God who can make straight what he has made crooked wow and so the thing is, God sets the standard. If God says that this is the bar, then that is the standard to which we attain, right? You cannot, I know it's easy for people to, um, 
out of lack of relationship and just out of of your flesh to go back to the law right to go back to leaning on the law to go back to pointing out the standards of the law to people but the thing is as it relates to sin god said what he said right you cannot make um straight what god has made crooked right you cannot change the standards of god if god says okay now i'm going to fix it this way then that is the way that it is right we we all tend to jump back you know you know as a part of a safety strategy of going back to the old way of of using the old standards of the law um, but we cannot use the law to navigate this life. We use the Holy Spirit to navigate this life. And if God has said, okay, this was the standard before and 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 now this is the standard, then we cannot say, look back at the law and say, well, that was the standard and that's basically safe. This is where I'm going to stay. No, we use Holy Spirit. You need to use the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the standard that God uses now as he has descended on us and he abides in us through his Holy Spirit. We need to hear from his Holy Spirit and walk in that way. There is no other way. God is sovereign. God has given us the law, yes, but he has also given us the spirit. And who are we to say that this is, we are going to pick and choose which way we're going to go. No, we're going to listen to the spirit. We're going to follow by Holy Spirit as it navigates the law, as it navigates in this world and shows us the way. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, Father God, for your many blessings. We thank you for your shield of protection, your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, our sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith. Our loins are girded about in truth and our feet are shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for sending your mighty angels to guard and protect us. We thank you for you being our rear guard. We love you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to navigate this world using your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.